Hi, this is Richard Nickel with Pittsburgh Modular Synthesizers, and today we're going to talk about the new touch controller module. The touch controller module is the performance hands-on side of the Voltage Research Laboratory, but it's also a standalone Eurorack module that can be incorporated into any setup. The touch controller can be utilized in a few different ways. The pads can be performed manually, or you can automate the process using the channel animator. The channel animator adds some sequencing and some movement to the touch controller. But first let's talk about manual performance. The touch controller has 10 touch sensitive pads. Each pad offers three opportunities for control voltage. Each channel has two assignable zero to five volt preset voltages, row A and row B. In addition to that, there's a Y axis output that is again zero to five volts. The touchpad keyboard can be used as one 10 step keyboard utilizing the all outputs where we have our gate signal, our channel A, which we're currently not using, the channel B, and the Y axis. But we can also split the keyboard into its left and right sides. So the left five pads have a left output section, which again has gate, channel A, channel B, and Y axis, and then the right five section, which has gate, channel A, channel B, and Y axis. All of these outputs can be utilized at the same time. The left side is always going to output what's happening on the left side. The right outputs are always going to be outputting what's happening on the right side. And the all outputs give us either a monophonic single pad response or a summing two channel response, depending on what mode we're in. Right now we're in monophonic mode, so we're getting one pad output at a time. If I switch the outputs from the all to the left, you can see I switched the B output and the gate. So if I stay on the left-hand side, it functions just like before. But as soon as I move over to the right-hand side, you can see I'm getting no response. That's because the gate is patched into the left output and not into the all or into the right. If I would switch the gate to the right, you can see that I am now getting the gate response, but the pitch response is not responding. And vice versa. The left side no longer responds to the gate, so we're not getting an output. So let's take a look at a few different ways that we could use this split keyboard. It's easy to imagine how you would use an all output as a single 10 step keyboard. But what if we wanted to do something just on the left? You can see the left still responds as normal because we've moved all the outputs to the left side, but the right side is now freed up to be used for something completely different. So we could use this for a second oscillator or as a way of controlling modulation. We can do the same thing with the right side now. You can see we get no response on the left. But we have the notes on the right. Here's another example. I now have the second oscillator of the voltage lab patched in on the left hand side and on the right hand side I have the original oscillator and you can see they function completely independent of each other. Essentially giving us two unique controllers. Another example would be to use 
that same second oscillator, but instead of patching it to the left side, we've now patched that to the all. So it's both here on the left and on the right. Now on the right side, I still have the other oscillator patched in, so we'll get both. <laughs> see I have one oscillator is responding to the second channel. The second oscillator is responding to the other channel. And then of course only one oscillator on this side. So far, we've covered manual performance in monophonic mode. If we switch to duophonic mode, we now change the response of the all output jacks. The all outputs now sum the left and the right side. You can see we have two active channels now. You can see both of the active channels interact with the pitch on the all output. The left and the right outputs function exactly the same as they have. This summing of both the left and the right side in duo mode offers us some really interesting capabilities once we start using the channel animator. So let's talk about the channel animator. What this section is, is it gives us some sequencing and also some voltage controlled movement over the active steps. So I'm gonna patch in a clock source from the MIDI clock of the voltage lab. Hold down the mono button. And just tap in a quick sequence. Now I performed left to right but you could just as easily patch in something a little bit more complicated. The sequence you tap in can be up to 64 steps long. And by using the reset button, we can also add rests. To create some interesting patterns that way. Using that reset button again, resets back to the first step. We also hold that down, we can tap in a clock divider. So this would be divide by one, two, three, four, all the way up to 10. So if we do divide by four here, now it's gonna respond to the clock every fourth step. Switch to two, switch back to one. It'll be a little bit easier to show if I tap in a, just a real basic sequence here. And now we can divide the clock by two, divide by three, divide by four, all the way up to divide by 10. The sequencer can also be used in duophonic mode. So we can simply tap in a little sequence on the left side. We can still manually perform on the right hand side here. Or we can add a sequence on that side as well. So we have two independent sequences running. Each one then can be clock divided in different ways. In this one we have divide by one, two, three, four, and eight. So we divide this side by two, by four, divide by eight. Sure, divide by three. And the same can be done on the right hand side. And all I'm doing is holding down the reset button and tapping one of the pads. The duophonic sequencer can also be utilized in another interesting way. Using the summing all outputs, we can tap a sequence in on the left-hand side, 
and then use the right hand side to transpose it. We can also create a small sequence over here. Using the second sequence to transpose the first. To create longer sequences. Another way we can interact with the channel animator is to use the scan input. The scan input is a CV input that takes 0 to 5 volts and assigns a channel based on the incoming voltage. So if I take this LFO and patch this in, you can see the triangle wave that I've sent in is now shifting the active channel, creating the appropriate gates and CV changes. If I change the shape, you can see now we're essentially moving forward. Bump that. Go backwards. And if instead of using an LFO, we would come out of, say, a random, we're going to get a random voltage. This is using the sample and hold. And of course, both the scan input and the step input sequences can be used at the same time. So if I create a sequence on top of this, what you end up with is sort of two active controllers fighting over the current step. You can get some interesting jittery action utilizing this feature. Thank you for watching. That was hopefully a brief introduction into the functionality of the touch controller. More information can be found on our website on the touch controller webpage. In addition, we'll have a manual out soon that will walk you step by step through all of these features as well. And as always, if you have any questions, feel free to send us an email. Thank you very much.